Hello, wonderful people. Praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Um, I want to share a scripture uh, very briefly from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2. From, uh, Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 20. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Praise the Lord. These um, the writings of the prophet Habakkuk. We know Habakkuk as the prophet who really lamented for seeing uh, the wicked prosper at a time uh, when uh, the righteous and the innocent people were, were really suffering. And he had questions. He had questions to God, uh, asking God why things were happening the, the way they were happening, that uh, the, it, it seemed as if the righteous uh, had no hope, had no helper, and there was nothing to be proud of for being a righteous person. And this made uh, Habakkuk, uh, as you read in chapter 1, to really have issues with God. And was like, why is it that... Uh, uh, there is such a thing. If you read chapter 1, it says, How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? It's like God was so quiet. Evil was happening in, the, in his world, around him, in his society. And it's like the, the, the devil had been given the freedom to continue with the evil. And God seemed to be silent. And we know that Habakkuk, prayed and prayed and it's like his prayers were not being answered and he started complaining just like when things seem uh, somehow not to be okay we keep on complaining and complaining then in chapter 2 we see god starting to to speak telling him about what he is going to do, telling him to write the vision for it will come for a time that there is an appointed time that God would act. And um, it goes up to a point where a God condemns the issue of idolatry. If you read from verse 18, it says, Of what value is an idol since a man has carved it, or an image that teaches lies? For he who makes it trust in his own creation, he makes idols that cannot speak. So God starts talking about the issues and issues. Woe to him who says woe to wood come to life. He's talking to, 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 to Habakkuk, telling him those who do evil, those who continue in evil, those who participate in idolatry, uh, they may seem like they are okay now. They may seem to be okay now, but there is an appointed time when they will regret what they are doing right now. Praise God. But there is this statement that is said, the last verse of chapter 2. It really captured my eyes. It really captured my attention. It says, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Like amidst all this, in spite of all these happenings, Habakkuk, there is one thing you must know. There is one thing. Yes, the world around you is evil. Yes, evil is continuing. It's like it is not stopping. But there is something you must know, Habakkuk. The Lord, this Lord, the God of Israel, the God of heaven and earth, this Lord is in his holy temple. Just to let you know, if you are not seeing God, I'm letting you know that God stays in his holy temple. So, if you want to see God, if you want to see God in this world of yours, in this world of yours which is full of evil, make sure you bring his temple here. Make sure his temple is here. Because the Lord is in his holy temple. 
God is telling him. Out of nowhere, he's telling him where God is dwelling. You're wondering, you're not seeing me? I'm in my temple, in my holy temple. That means that if you can draw my temple from wherever it is, if, you, if this environment, if your territory can embrace the presence of my temple and make sure it's holy, then I can dwell there. And we know very well when God dwells in a place, when God dwells in someone, what happens? Hallelujah. He says, but the Lord is in his holy temple. So the secret for walking in victory amidst a, a crooked generation, amidst a crooked world, amidst an evil world, is to make sure the Lord is in his temple. Now, the concept of the temple in the Bible of course, we know, first of all, it refers to the house of the Lord. My house shall be called a house of prayer. The temple refers to the house of the Lord. Literally a place where people go, people gather to worship God, to offer their sacrifices, to, 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 to praise Him, to, to listen to His word. That's a temple, the house of God. If at the church is to prevail over the enemy, if the church is to overcome the enemy, if the church is to have a voice over what is happening in this world, then the Lord must be in his temple. There are so many temples, so many churches, so many buildings which are just buildings, but the Lord is not there. People are there, but the Lord is not there. I remember one day, uh, I, I was having prayers. When I was in campus, I used to have sessions alone. I would have personal cases on Fridays. And uh, in one of these Fridays, I was just there flat on the floor, and I was praying. I, I will, in most cases, I will do one hour praise, one hour worship, and then one hour uh, prayer. And then in that session of prayer, uh, at some point, I just, uh, I had taken a brother I was mentoring, I was working with, and uh, I told him, we have prayed, God has heard us. It's time now, let's listen to God. Let's listen to what God has to say to us. And we were there, flat on the ground, listening. And I had this vision. And I saw a, a church building. And, and when I drew near, I, I saw that there was, inside there were no people. There were just the stones. Stones, stones. Literally stones. No preacher, no member, but there were stones. And then a voice came to me and was told, Look at my house. It is full. Of stones and I was oh no full of stones so they, they, they then he, he showed me a path and showed me and said this is a path to repentance and holiness there was a, a signboard written the way to repentance and holiness so you, you may have a church building but inside you have stones It says, but the Lord is in his holy temple. We must, as church, we must contend to have the Lord in our houses of worship. If there is one thing as a preacher, as an intercessor, as a church member, that you must pray and desire to see, is to see the Lord being in your fellowship. The Lord being in in your fellowship. Brethren, I know the Bible says, whenever two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be with them. Gathered in my name. For him to be there with you, it, the gathering must be in his name. And what is the implication of that? Whoever names or calls the name of the Lord must, must flee or must desist 
or must stop engaging in evil. Whoever mentions the name of the Lord must come out of evil. So it's not just where the, where the name is mentioned. You can gather two or three or in the name of the Lord. But if evil is still part of your life, the Lord is not there. There is no fellowship between light and darkness, brethren. So this is a case. The Lord is not just in any temple. is in his holy temple. And if we want the Lord to come into the temple, we must, we must contend for holiness. We must preach holiness. We must embrace holiness. We must drink holiness. We must eat holiness. We must speak holiness. We must live holiness. We must live holy. There's no compromise about that. It is the pure in heart that will see God inside their temple. The pure in heart are the ones who will see God in their temple, not anyone. If you are a Democrat in your salvation or Christianity or a populist, let me tell you, be a populist. But the Bible and the word is clear. It's the pure in heart who will see God. So it says, but the Lord is in his holy temple. If we can keep the Lord in our temples, then we will overcome the world. It says, in his holy temple. Many people desire to have God in their fellowships. But they are not ready to pay the price to live holy lives. And that is a challenge. Nothing comes for nothing. Nothing comes easy. The, but the Lord is in his holy temple. So I've given you the first understanding. The first understanding of the concept of the temple is the house of God. But then the second understanding of the temple, I think um, we can look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. The Bible says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? So the second meaning of the concept of the temple of God, the second meaning of the, of the essence of the temple of God is that, it means, is that it means the believer. The believer here is the temple of God. Don't you know that you do not, don't you know that you, you ourselves, are God's temple and that... God's spirit lives in you. So you yourself, you as a believer, yes, you go into the house of the Lord, but then you are the house of the Lord. You are the temple. You are the temple. You are the temple. The one who is looking at me, you who is watching this video, you are the temple. You must realize who you are. Unless you acknowledge that you are the temple of God, you cannot silence the world around you. So the Bible says, if the Lord is in his holy temple, holy temple, just like the house of the Lord, the building, the gathering place, even you as the house of the Lord, you must maintain purity. You must be holy. The Bible says, be holy for I am holy. And if I want to be in you, I, you have to be holy. I cannot go where I'm not compatible with. I cannot dwell where it's dirty. You have to be holy for I am holy. If we are to be in fellowship, you have to be light, I be light. That's what God says. Be holy for I am holy. 
Nowadays, this holiness is like an impossibility. People are looking at holiness like it's impossible to live a life of holiness, a life of purity. People are sleeping around. People are doing all kinds of nasty things, all kinds of nonsense. People, are, I'm not saying this to condemn you. I'm not saying this to say that I'm Mr. No, it all. I'm Mr. Righteous. I'm more than righteous. I'm more righteous than you. No. We all must contend and cry for the mass of God and the grace of God to enable us and empower us to live holy lives. We can. God cannot say be holy if it is impossible to be holy. As a matter of fact, whenever God speaks, it works. When he says, let there be light, there was light. So if he says, let there be holiness, there will be holiness. If he said, be holy, it means he released the capacity, the ability for you to live a holy life so you can be holy you can live a holy life you can live a holy life don't allow the devil to speak a lie to you don't allow that lie of the devil that it's impossible to live a life of purity that it's impossible to live a life of holiness don't allow the devil to just cheat you don't allow one is was if you so you are the temple of the lord you are the temple. You must contend for holiness. That God will find space inside you and dwell inside you. And then you find the results. So in this book, in, in, uh, let's go back to Habakkuk. Let's go back quickly to Habakkuk. Habakkuk, where are you? Yes, it's here. So, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. If you want to silence the world around you, if you want to influence the world around you, there is one thing God has given us, that we make sure the Lord is in his holy temple. You want to silence the witches around your village? Let the Lord be in his temple. Know that you are the temple of the Lord. Keep yourself holy. Invite him into your heart. He's at the door knocking. Allow him to indwell you. And then let's see if there is a witch who can disturb you. Let's see if there is a witch who can make you not sleep at night. Listen to me, the fact that we get defeated by the devil or we get defeated in the hands of satanic people, satanic beings, illuminati, devil worshippers, and we are afraid of them, it's because we have not come to the point where the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord, we are walking with the Lord, but the Lord is not inside us. Sometimes we are just uh, there, but not there. But if we can come to a point where nothing that separates us from the Lord is entertained anymore, where there is no compromise, where anything that drives away the Lord from us is detested and hated, and where we invite God, the fear of God is instilled in us, and we just want to love God and serve God sincerely, our hearts are right with God, and God is in us, let me tell you, we are carrying fire. He is a dangerous man. He who has the Lord inside them. Let me tell you, somebody who has God inside him is a dangerous person. It's like a burning bush. It's like a man who is surrounded in fire. Has fire inside and is surrounded by fire. Let me tell you, it's difficult for a witch to deal with that one. Let me tell you, we have a mandate to silence the devil. We have a mandate to silence the world. We have a mandate to silence all the voices of the accuser. We have a mandate. There are things that must be silenced. There are diseases that must be silent. When we talk of the world, it means the system of the world, the satanic system, the satanic system, the demonic system, the evil that is going on. We can silence the evil around us. We can silence diseases. We can silence demons. We can silence Silence every kind of altar, every kind of witchcraft that surrounds us, every arrow of fire that is thrown towards us can be silenced if we come to a point where the Lord is in his holy temple. 
It is a time. Create time. Seek for ways to contend. Seek for ways of silencing you. Seek for ways of ensuring that God is in you. Seek for ways for ensuring that God is with you. Seek for ways to ensure that God is inside you. Don't walk alone. If you walk alone, you'll be defeated. If you walk alone, you'll be overcome by the evil one. But if the Lord is, listen, David once said, if the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, You need the Lord to be with you. You need the Lord to be inside you. To make you more than a conqueror. I don't know how this message finds you. I don't know how this message finds you. But one thing I know. If you allow the Lord. I don't have time to say all the benefits. But if you allow the Lord. To be in his holy temple. You are his holy temple. Just allow him. You see, we allow other people to get into our hearts and take over. You allow your boyfriend to get into your heart, but you, don't, you can't allow Jesus to reign in your heart. You allow your girlfriend to get in your heart. You, you give them your heart. You allow things, issues of this world to take over your heart. You allow football to take over your heart. I'm not saying it's bad to watch football. But you, if you allow other things to take over your heart instead of the love for Christ, if Christ is not enthroned in your heart, if Christ is not enthroned in your heart, no matter how hard you fight the devil, you cannot win. Until Christ is in his holy temple. You cannot silence the devil. The witches will continue to have the last laugh. The ridiculous will continue to have the last laugh. But if the Lord is in his temple, Though I pass through the shad the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Yes, it's the valley of the shadow of death. But no fear will engulf me. Why? For he is with me. He is inside me. Though I pass through the fire, the fi though you pass through the fire, the fire, the flames will not consume you. Though you pass through many waters, it will not, the water will not drown you. Why? Because he, I am with you. That's the word of God. The Lord is our present help in our times of need. But he will only help us from a point of relationship. If we do not have a link with him, if we are not related with him, if we are not with him, listen, and this is why it made Moses to tell God, if you're not going with us, we're not leaving this place. If you're not living with us, if you're not going with us, let me tell you, God, thank you for sending me. But this mission is aborted if you're not accompanying me with that mission. And God left, uh, and God went with them through a pillar of fire at night, a, a cloud during the day. And whenever the cloud stopped, they stopped. They did not dare to continue the journey when they know that God is not in the journey. Today, people don't care whether they have God or they don't have God. They go. They just go. Let me tell you, make sure first God is in his holy temple. Make sure God is in his holy temple before you do anything, before you go for that deliverance session, before you go and pray for that sick person. Make sure God is in his holy temple. Let me tell you, you will have no trouble in silencing the accuser. You will not have any trouble in silencing the devils. You will not have any trouble in silencing the 
enemy, the enemy shall be silenced. Let the whole earth be quiet. In the name of Jesus. I don't know where this message finds you. But I pray that you have, you, you, you have a time. Contemplate. If the Lord is not in his temple, bring him back. Bring him back. Go back to the first love. Bring him back. Ask him back. Repent. Repent. Stop that evil character, that evil things, the evil things that you are doing in secret. Stop them. Come out of that evil. Arise, shine for thy light has come. It's time. It's time. It's time you stop playing games with your salvation. It's time you make sure God is in his holy temple. Pastor, preacher, it's time to make sure God is in you as his holy temple. It's time also to make sure that God is in the house of God where people come to be blessed so that when they come, they encounter God and the enemies who have bound them, they be silenced forever. Father, I thank you and I honor your name. Thank you for my listener. Thank you for my viewer. I pray, Jehovah, King of glory, that this message blesses someone. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Jehovah, King of glory, that everlasting Redeemer, you help that one who has backslidden. I pray that you restore them back in the name of Jesus. I speak your power to deliver them from the chains. The spirit of backsliding, I cancel it in Jesus' name. And I pray, everlasting Redeemer, that, Lord, people will surrender their hearts. Give you their hearts, oh God, that you may be enthroned, oh God, in their in the holy temple. In the holy temple, you will be there, and that the world will be silenced. Thank you, Jesus. You're there, and you know you've backslid, or somehow you're not right with God, or God is not in his temple, and you're saying, I want God to be in his temple. I am his temple. I want him to come in. I want him to take charge. I want you to repeat this prayer. Say, dear God, thank you for creating me. I know I am supposed to be your temple, but I have been a temple of other things. I have harbored other things. I have harbored anger and other evils. And today I reject that. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I reject the devil and his works. Today I welcome Jesus Christ to be enthroned inside my heart that I will be the holy temple of God. Sanctify me. Deliver me from the evil one. And Lord, let your will be done for my life. I welcome you, Jesus Christ. I believe in you and I worship you. Have your way in my life. Take control. Take charge. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray and believe. Amen. God bless you. And may God do you good. As this message has blessed you, please share with others. Share the love, share the message. Let God be established in the hearts of men. Let God be in his holy temple so that the earth, the world, will be silent. God bless you. I love you very much. <laughs>